Swissborg is the official partner of my channel where you can buy, sell, hold, and more importantly, stake your cryptocurrencies. You can even earn yield on your stable coins. Sign up with my link and you'll earn up to $100 worth of their native token CHSB just for depositing 50 euros worth of crypto. Swissborg. Hello everybody, welcome back. So we've got this uh, strange uh, vibe going on in the market where, for some reason, I say for some reason, I, I couldn't see it myself, to be honest with you. At the time, I, I really couldn't see it, outside of the idea that there was a Golden Cross retest and, and whatnot. And that we were holding this particular area on the chart, this 2150. And when we looked at um, the Bitcoin, uh, the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart on the Patreon live stream, I was... Uh, yeah, I just could not see any reason to be particularly bullish on this outside of the idea of a death cross retest, which I suppose we are approaching anyway. But look, you can't be right all the time, can you? Otherwise, that would just be incredible. But we are getting it. So, I mean, one of the theories that we've been talking about, even though it was not the preferred outcome, uh, although it was something that was kind of realistic, um was the v-shaped recovery for altcoins around golden cross cross retests so obviously uh, ethereum showing strength around the 50 exponential which is a golden cross retest uh, xrp not a good example of that but uh, there's your 200 exponential obviously the, the, the golden cross was way back when yeah uh, atom is i suppose a, a better example of this uh, coming down to a 200 exponential and bouncing from that so potential v-shaped recovery and blah 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 uh, the total market cap two uh, on the daily similar to that of ethereum a golden cross retest so and this has v-shaped recovery this has done a v-shaped recovery so interesting really because um when was it tuesday when i was doing the live stream i said look you know the, the best thing that we could be looking for for altcoins would be to go back up to our previous resistances and for me personally still thinking that a bitcoin top is is close and looking to get out of any of the trades that haven't quite materialized you know um or, but uh, as, as it stands at the moment you know my atom trade um finished done and uh, that's pretty much it really uh, eos already hit its first sell target so i'll be looking to uh, to close again if and when we get back up to the top there but regardless of all these little sort of silly trades that i'm talking about let's just think about bitcoin for a moment because it's the etf day that's right so etf has now been approved and i'm not one for conspiracies really i try i fight the urge to go for conspiracies i just think look <laughs> It's interesting. Uh, there's always an element of truth to a conspiracy, otherwise it wouldn't be compelling. But you know, can, you know am I prepared to uh, partition my mind to such an extent uh, that I see the world through, you know, it's, it's ultimate skepticism? But you know, I'm an open-minded person, and I like to think of myself as somebody who actually thinks rather than just, you know, blatantly just accepts. And the whole SEC thing, I said more or less from the beginning, really. You know, the SEC have, um, have, have they, 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 there's something not quite right here. You know, when they marked off all those other uh, blockchains, you know, Atom and uh, Algorand and, and, and whatever, these are serious blockchains with real utility. And, um, and I would imagine uh, down the line, uh, some serious value. And uh, they're the ones who are getting slapped on the wrist, whereas there's millions, well, so not millions, but actually hundreds um, of uh, altcoins out there that are nothing more than a scam and that have done nothing more than uh, use this market as an opportunity to rug pull and, and line their own pockets. And they're, they're walking around scot-free. So uh, it seemed to me at the time that whatever the SEC are, um, are scrutinizing is, you know, it seems... seems that there's something going on here. They want those lower prices for whatever reason. The SEC don't seem to like crypto, or they they previously were quite you know, okay with it, and now they've turned around and said they're not okay with it, yet they're approved a Bitcoin spot ETF just yesterday. So, interesting stuff. So, uh, the reason I, I talk about this um, is because of that weird tweet that happened. Oh, our account got hacked and the market dumped. Oh, no. Uh, whoops, I've got access to it again. That's very unrealistic as well. I've had my account hacked before, uh, and I never got it back. Never came back. You know, gone. That's it. You know, my account was hacked. Uh, my Telegram account, that would be. And I had to create a brand new one. Um, and, um, and yeah, they, you know, it just seems a little fishy, just like everything that they seem to be doing. And, and, you know, the, the SEC just seemed a bit strange. So now what we've got is the actual approval, and, and the market is actually moving up. Um, alts are V-shaping. 
Uh, Ethereum's making new local highs. Uh, Bitcoin's uh, refusing to break down is actually still technically in a, in, a, in a nice kind of uptrend on the short term time frame. It's got a breakout of momentum here as well on RSI, um, MACD and on the money flow index on the daily but navigating the top is always going to be the, the, the key here because i believe that the top is either in or effectively we're about to wick higher and, and mark an absolute peak similar to how we did in 2019 over here so the top felt realistic around 12,000. there was a wick there was another wick there was another wick but effectively marked the top and then a consolidation kicked in now um now, I'm not here to say where Bitcoin is going to go in the long run. Those are effectively clickbait titles, I think. But in the short term, this kind of area feels uh, toppy to me, you know, within a few thousand dollars. Now, th the reason I talk about all this is because, you know, uh, Money Flow Index on a weekly is, is usually quite a good tool to spot uh, bottoms and tops if you get single drives of divergence, really. So one, two drives finding the pretty much the absolute low here one two drives finding pretty much this wick low effectively and uh, when it comes to bearish divergence bang bang more or less finding the uh, the, the the wick high you know within a few percent really which is when, when you're dealing with something that's done you know hundreds thousands of percent really a couple more percent is nothing so i'm looking at the same vibe going on here if we close this candle body higher than uh, previous candle bodies or even the wicks but really just the uh, the candle body for me then we've marked a, a, a drive of bearish divergence over here we also would have it on the rsi but it's the money flow next that i'm focusing on so just to hit it home right and uh, we're all bullish we love to be bulls we are bulls I, i'm primarily a spot trader but let's invert the scale for a moment and let's have a little think about this if you are a bull you look mostly at supports supports are key to being a bull Obviously, resistances are as well, but sometimes it's nice to invert the scale. So what we'd be looking at here would be a chart that has basically had a big tear up and it's had a consolidation. It's forming a higher low uh, and uh, a serious area of support. If I was looking at this, I'd be seriously thinking about buying it, <clears throat> buying it for some form of reversal, even if it was just a, a reversal to what we would consider a death cross retest, uh, which would be maybe a 50 exponential, which is currently sitting down here at... Uh, or well, 31,800 uh, and trending down so you know if you're you know, you would be looking to get out of these trades it's a bearish chart but you'll be looking for a bounce now the reason I highlight this area is not for no reason. We've got areas here where big rejections took place. We've got some supports. We've got a big breakdown here and we've got a big support here and another big support here. So I'll be looking at this as like a, a big support or should we say in real life a major resistance now you can get wicks higher like we had in 2019 obviously um, and those wicks could probably take us up to the, the fifty two thousand dollar zone where we can see on the weekly it's nice and relatively clear candle bodies candle wicks quite a few of each and um, marking that fifty two thousand about three hundred or so thereabouts fifty two thousand three it's around the 52,000 anyway. We'll just call it 52,000. Wicks to those levels, absolutely appropriate um, to see that. Um, but again, within a few percent of, of, of navigating a top, no one actually gets the absolute top. No one absolutely gets the bottom. You, you work out from a risk to war perspective what's most likely. If you think there's more uh, downside to, uh, than there is upside, then the risk to reward's not great and obviously vice versa. This is why it's okay to speculate bottoms at significant areas on a chart because you know that the chances of going up much higher are greater than going down much lower. You know, I didn't buy this absolute bottom. I didn't buy this absolute bottom. I bought somewhere around here on the last cycle once areas have been reclaimed, just around 4,000 and... Yeah, you know, I had a great time. Yeah, you know, I I didn't buy this absolute low. I made a single trade and and sold around nineteen and a half, and then I waited for a retest and uh, picked it up around twenty one thousand. So that with all of that, you know, it's it's okay to accept that no one catches the wick low and the wick high. What you do is you try and uh, grab a nice piece of price action in between. And I think the uh, the you know from a, again I, to, I repeat myself all the time. The risk to reward perspective at this point, a particular moment in time, is not great. But altcoins are doing something. Which is, again, it was never my preferred outcome, but we have to accept, whoopsie, uh, we have to accept that Ethereum is now breaking out uh, with a great candle now. 
um, and uh, effectively doing the V-shaped recovery, which is something that we talked about three or four weeks ago, and that you know what what would be a great entry point would be a dump down into either a 50 or a 200 exponential, uh, and this is something that we should think about rather than trying to constantly buy every single dip when the market is a, you know, effectively looking to reach a peak. And that's what has happened here. We uh, we uh, we wicked into a uh, major support, and effectively a, a V-shaped recovery has happened from the 50 exponential. This is the case for some of these coins. Atom's a good example of this, to be honest with you. Atom did a real V-shaped recovery from exactly where you'd want to be at, a 200 exponential. And now we're working on a V-shaped recovery, so that that marks potential move back up to 12, maybe even higher. And I'll tell you who's doing a V-shaped recovery absolute textbook over here on the daily for the total two so that is the v-shape recovery that's happened already and uh, the 50 exponential tested here and here and the v-shape is now completed so after a v-shape recovery to our previous resistance are we going to look for a new local high well uh, you know this chart particularly the total two says yeah we can do that we're not overextended we're not overheated over here on the daily that's the sort of thing that can do it i know it's not a normal chart it's a it's a measurement of market cap but it it, it definitely could uh, and uh, you know when we were talking about these alt seasons or at least the alt season 2.0 because the original alt season that we were talking about was obviously down here this is when i was touting for an alt season uh, and so far it's obviously been quite good and i said the alt season 2.0 if we're going to get it it's going to be from this level here to up to this level up here which was just short of a 40 percent move and um, you know it's about a 37 percent move and uh, when we got to this level I said all right fine that's good it's all looking good but there's still further to go but do you believe it given that Bitcoin is already approaching a previous high now playing um, both sides of the uh, you know I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate with myself over here so you know when we're talking about uh, Bitcoin dominance and uh, rotations and things like that and um, they can come in the form of a Bitcoin top or should I say it has in the past come in the form of a Bitcoin top it's not the sort of thing you would normally um, expect but the last one that happened in the form of a Bitcoin top was when the Bitcoin dominance was at 73 its previous week candle body high here um, and it was pretty much a no-brainer because altcoins hadn't moved at all really altcoins had been static the volumes were extremely low bitcoin itself had rallied 300 percent over three months and had done it amazingly and uh, the dominance chart effectively had peaked and so yeah we did get a major rotation at this point here and altcoins were rallying hundreds and some thousands of percent throughout this period now this can happen again but it's not the same setup. I'm just putting it to you now that, yeah, of course it can happen again. A rotation can happen again, uh, but it's not obvious on this chart that it will happen. Because this was a peaky chart uh, with a double top, and this is a chart that's basically brewing and con a continuous, uh, continuation of an uptrend. But we have to accept what the charts are doing. The price is showing us one thing. And, um, you know, when you're hodling, you're happy with this. That's fine. But from a trading perspective, it adds too many questions. This, uh, it's this I've got too much skepticism around what's going to happen in the very short term to really try to uh, capitalize on this particular move that's happening right now. I'm absolutely in no way um, a FOMO type guy. Uh, and uh, I would imagine that there's a lot of FOMO ideas going on right now uh, as uh, Bitcoin's ETF is about to go live and uh, altcoins are rallying like hard and stuff. So that's fine. That's fine. I, it is what it is. The reason I'm trying to um, put this in, you know, spin it in two different lights is because there's never one exact strategy that you can apply to the market. You're, it's always a constantly developing thing, especially when you have uh, fundamental and uh, narratives that run alongside the chart you know the idea that you would be able to price in an ETF um, launch uh, to uh, to like a you know, for Bitcoin into an altcoin chart is well it's very difficult it's a gamble really it's kind of a gamble and I think that's what's really happening at the moment although the charts are saying v-shaped recoveries are taking place which again you know it's not it's not something i hadn't considered made a few videos about it we talked about it on the on the patreon and things like that but it was never the um it was never the preference and um, the preference the preference at this point in the market right now is is one of caution rather than you know over optimism uh, and uh, the the bigger move in in crypto is going to be much later um 
maybe you know tw- towards potentially the end of this year, but certainly the the following year, that's where the big big moves are going to take place. I would expect based on previous models and cycles and things like that. We do have a halving coming up as well around April, I think, which uh, normally marks a, a peak as well. So we've got a variety of these bullish fundamental things that often will mark a a, a peak in the market, yeah, you know, a, a peak or at least uh, start a downtrend. Uh, this today being one of them. The, the next one would be, uh, I suppose, the halving, and then the one after that, if we're going to get it, is going to be the Dixie, uh, which uh, should respond, uh, I would imagine, negatively, believe it or not, to rate cuts. You know, so <clears throat> I think, uh, I th- yeah, I th- my my preference is to be overcautious, really, uh, because I am pretty much aware that a consolidation is due and with the uh, with, with that consolidation will come a great opportunity later on down the line but you know me as like you um enjoy the hodl perspective the buy hold stake and we have allocated plenty of awesome positions in the beginning of uh, of last year which will basically continue throughout this in these next couple of years but from a trading perspective yeah it looks like a v-shaped recovery is on the cards it's well it's, it's already happened on the total two and uh, we've got a breakout on ethereum and um, bitcoin is is probably going to make another run up to 48 maybe even a wick higher than that uh, but really uh, on a risk to reward perspective at least for bitcoin uh, it's not great altcoins the risk to reward obviously we're talking sort of major big moves up uh, and potentially major big moves down so you know i like to buy lows really and hold those lows and trade those lows i don't particularly like buying highs and i, I still have some trades that are operating at the moment and i would be looking to get out of those some of them closed last night and the the rest of them hopefully will close at the uh, at the limit orders i've set them at uh, but the main thing to focus on is how is Bitcoin going to respond to today's trading? Um, Bloomberg believed two billion, perhaps maybe four billion, is going to enter the spot market for Bitcoin, which is true. It could, it could. Then you got to think about what this ETF really, yeah, really is. And um, yeah, it's a spot ETF. It's going to take Bitcoins off the market. You know, this is this is going to be very good uh, in the long run uh, because. It will reduce the supply and price responds very well to a reduced supply. It's all supply and demand, isn't it, really? But when when you tune into Sanity FM, um, it wouldn't really be advisable to buy into Bitcoin at these levels um, for the short term. Yeah, for the long term, that's fine. And some people might look at it from that perspective. Like say, Michael Saylor is exactly the sort of guy who's quite happy to buy the top every single time because his um, his projection is over a much longer period, and, and that's fine. So yeah, it depends on the time frame. But it, it would, if we're talking about the, sh- the short term time frame, I, I would not advise this area being an attractive area to buy from. Uh, and we now have a spot ETF going live at a very unattractive part in the market. So. Uh, it might mark a, a, a peak, to be honest with you. Shorts likely will start to stack at these higher levels, and the consolidation, in my opinion, is likely to continue. Now, whether we see altcoins continue with this upside momentum, this continuation of this trend, is a different story, as we recognize that this sort of thing has happened once before, although the previous time it did it in, in 2019 was, was way more obvious that that sort of thing could happen from uh, you know it doesn't seem to me that this is a, a likely scenario to happen around here but you know playing devil, devil's advocate there was a peak over here continuation of the downtrend on the dominance chart back down to the 200 exponential i mean we haven't golden crossed on the higher term time frames here it's uh, it's only the uh, the daily and below that's actually particularly bullish we did have a v-shaped recovery over here so look i'm not um i'm not convinced either way i know everybody looks to me to make you know some kind of call and sometimes i'm quite comfortable making a call but right now i still am very skeptical very cynical about what's actually going to happen today and um yeah when you feel like that uh, it's not worthy of making a trade and i'm still very much in profit taking mode because my main focus is to buy lower whether it's next month six months from now or at some point next year with an inordinate amount of cash which has been generated over the last 12 months um that's my next major allocation 
whatever happens today, this week, next month, of course my hodl bags will benefit, but you know when it comes to deploying large amounts of money into this market, um, it just does not feel, I just don't feel comfortable uh, applying that sort of cash into the market at this stage, really. I'm looking, if anything, to get out of the trades that I've been in uh, over the last few months, since what, September, October. Right, thank you for watching. I hope you have a nice day. Play it safe out there. Um, there's going to be fireworks, I imagine. Um, uh, whether they're exciting or disappointing, we, we don't know. Anyway, stay tuned. Hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.